everybody? How is everybody? Good? All right. My name is Delaney Taka, and I'm the contemporary worship intern at the 11 o'clock service, which means that I organize the music and I'm the worship leader there. Um, I also just graduated from high school. I went to Mount DeSales Academy, and I will be attending Eastern University in the fall as an education and youth ministry major, and I actually start on Saturday. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I am the first in my family to go off to college and the first grandkid, and in about a week from today, I will move away from home, leaving my own little world, and go out to start my adventure in Pennsylvania. When we first meet Felix in the story, he's very much so stuck in his own little world. He has a very small perspective and in some ways is only thinking of himself. It's not until he starts positively interacting with others at his school, that he realizes that he has the power to really change someone's day. He has the power to tear someone down or build them up. There are a couple of ways in which I relate to Felix at this point in the story. First of all, I am about to go off to college, so sooner or later, whether or not I like it, my own little world and my protective bubble is about to be popped. It's easy in high school not to have a lot of perspective. We can be consumed by our personal world of Starbucks and 7-Eleven and Giant Runs. It's in this story that we realize that once Felix learns to look up and out, he realizes that even though those, those things are important, I don't know where my friends and I would be without our 7-Eleven ice cream, there's a much bigger world out there. And everyone around him can be touched either positively or negatively by the interactions they have with him. But Felix doesn't learn that he has this power just yet. First, he begins to realize the impact that others are having on him. What I love about this story is that it doesn't take it being this kid's birthday to make his bucket full. I mean, think about it. My birthday was last week, and it's pretty easy to have your bucket full on a day like that. People were doing nice things to me, for me, giving me gifts, celebrating me. It's easy to feel great when there's so many people pouring positivity into you. Apparently, not everyone has a birthday month. Usually, people just celebrate it for a day, but in my family, it doesn't really go like that all the time. I was extremely confused when my friends told me that this year. <laughs> I'm a performer, and I get that from my dad, who's quite the showman. For example, from the age of five, I've been obsessed with Peter Pan. Now, my, this is me when I'm five and 17. I never grew out of the Peter Pan thing. <laughs> but for my family, we always have themes for our birthday. That's kind of my dad's thing. And so when I was five and I was obsessed with Peter Pan, my dad turned our backyard into Neverland, and my entire family was forced to dress up. So we have a lot of members of the cast here with us this morning, like my grandparents, that's my grandpa on the eye patch. My dad would be Captain Hook up there. That was pretty cool, but then at the end, he had a Barbie Tinkerbell that was strung from a fishing line, and it went from my bedroom window all the way down to my tree fort. She flew across our yard. It was insane. <laughs> From my experience, it's pretty easy to feel on top of the world when your backyard is filled with magic just because you turned five. But that's not the kind of day Felix was having. It was just a normal Tuesday, and he was experiencing normal interactions. Normal interactions that had the power to shape his whole day. Just while he was at school, a bunch of people had the chance to make a positive impact on his day and pour positivity into his bucket. Now, when I first found a home at Glenmar, I was not a fan of church at all. <laughs> my dad had been drawn here because of the praise service, and even though my family didn't know anyone here, we came because of the music and the sermons. Well, I was in middle school, and I'd never seen a drum cage like the one we have at the 11 o'clock service. I thought it was really cool. I also thought that whoever was in the cage couldn't see me from the congregation, and I'd never really seen someone play the full drum set before, so I was in like seventh grade and I started kind of playing the drums in the air, thinking he couldn't see me. It's like air guitar, but air drums, and I was really good at it. But I was also sitting like right there so he could see me the whole time. And so he could, no, he noticed the little girl sitting in the front row that was going like this the whole time he was playing. And so eventually he kind of took notice to that and would smile and wave when he got the chance. And lo and behold, I was kind of excited to go to church because that drummer guy was going to notice me. And if I wasn't there, then who was he going to wave to? I mean, I had a job now. <laughs> 
A little bit after that, I um, decided to sing and play guitar at a coffee house that Glenmar was having, and lo and behold, my drummer buddy was actually there. And he was the leader of the 11 o'clock band. Had I known this, maybe I wouldn't have played the air drums, but I did, and he knew me, so then once he realized that I could sing, he on the spot asked me to join the band, and I've been a part of it ever since. This is us now. Those interactions that I shared with him were little. They were about air drums, and then it suddenly turned into something so much bigger, and then I was a part of this band that changed my life forever. It started with a wave. It started with a smile. With interactions like that, Nuke would never have felt inclined to just come up to a random middle schooler and ask them to join the all-adult band. But because of my air drums, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but it changed my life forever. Now, back to Felix. He's just having a normal day, and it's not going so well. He's feeling beat down and worn out when suddenly his day takes a turn for the better. He gives a report, and his classmates respond positively. But if you read the fine print, it's not until he receives a positive response from others about his action that his day turns around. Just like his grandfather had said in the beginning, it's not the things that happen to us, like his little sister knocking down his blocks. It's the interaction they shared beforehand that caused the negative reaction from her. It's not what happens to Felix that makes his day good or bad. It's the interactions he shares with others. The author of the adult version of this book says that this invisible bucket we have in our lives is constantly emptied or filled, depending on what others say or do to us. When our bucket is full, we feel great. When our bucket is empty, we feel lousy. Now, I can't tell you how many times I've come to church on Wednesday night for rehearsal with an empty bucket. This past spring, I've tried to fit a lot into my schedule. The end of senior year is absolutely crazy. And by 7 p.m. on Wednesday nights, I was pretty wiped. When Adam Loudon and I were working on our sermons for this weekend, we were trying to come up with some real-life examples. I looked at him and said, who do we know who's a good bucket filler? Who has this insane power to make someone smile or make their day better just by being a part of it? And at the same time, we said, Tyler. Tyler Hart has been a part of this church forever, and he's a total goofball. We've been friends ever since our first Hurley mission trip together, and this past year he started playing bass in the band. I think everyone should have a Tyler. When you're around him, he's always smiling and happy, and he just makes your day better. He's an excellent example of someone in our own congregation who's a good bucket filler. You don't have to turn your backyard into Neverland to make someone's day, although that was pretty cool. Thank you, Dad. Sometimes all it takes is a smile, a laugh, a hug, and suddenly that person's day is better because you are a part of it. Now, what if you feel really empty, like you just don't have anything to give? Well, that is where God comes in. Today's scripture reading talks about the Samaritan woman at the well. Now, this is just another small interaction between two people. In their discussion, Jesus tells her that, yes, Jacob and her, their providers before him had given them water to live, but the difference is that Jesus gives us water for eternal life. You see, you can never be empty with God. You can feel lousy, like you don't have anything to give, but no matter what, there are still things to be thankful for. Still good to find, even if it feels absolutely impossible. At the end of the day, most people that are here hearing this message have family, friends, a roof over their head, food, and water. All of these things that we have to be grateful for come from God. James 1.17 says that every generous act of giving with every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. At the end of the day, those are all worldly things. Even if we have everything we could ever dream of, it could never fully satisfy us and our souls would still be longing for something more. In the passage of the woman at the well, she says that Jesus says that everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again. In other words, we could have everything our worldly hearts could desire and still not be satisfied because without God, we have nothing. I was listening to Shine FM while I was driving to work earlier this week, and they were talking about how people are like cups of coffee. All right, picture this. You're walking into work. It's an early Monday morning, and the only thing you have going for you is the cup of coffee in your hand, and suddenly someone bumps you. Your coffee goes everywhere. It's all over you. It's all over your bag. It's all over your work. Now, why did the coffee spill everywhere? My answer was because someone bumped me, but apparently that's wrong. 
the reason that coffee went everywhere is because that is what was in your cup. For example, if you had tea, tea would have gone everywhere. If you had water, water would have gone everywhere. The person went on to say that it's up to us to determine what will overflow from us when things get bumpy. That's a lot of what we've been talking about when it comes to the concept of everyone having a bucket. Even when you feel completely empty and you're having a no good day like Felix was at first, if life gets bumpy, you're going to have a reaction as something is going to come out of you. But if you let God be the one to fill your bucket, he will fill you with his grace, his love, his mercy, and when things get rough, that's what others will see. There are earthly things that can satisfy us, that can fill our buckets, but at some point, that will run dry, unless we are also filled with that which is from God. You may be thinking, all right, Lane, that's great, but how do I overflow with Christ into other people's lives? I mean, that's huge. But I'm not calling you to do something that big. Our God is one of little interactions. You could look at this moment between he and the woman at the well and think, wow, look at this life-changing event that happened between Jesus and someone else, when in reality, Jesus is just a regular guy spreading a little light and life into the people that he encounters. Through this message, I am encouraging you to go out and be disciples, but not necessarily run up to people and go, hi, my name's Delaney Taka, have you heard of the Lord? <laughs> now, I did take a personality quiz that said that I'm 99% extroverted, so if that works for you, then by all means, go ahead, and I totally understand. But most people probably don't have that way about spreading the word of God. And that's totally fine. Jesus actually encourages us in Scripture not to make a show out of our relationship with him. In Matthew 6, verse 5 through 6, he says, And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners so that they may be seen by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But whoever you, whenever you pray, go to your room and shut the door and pray to your father who is in secret, and your father who sees in secret will reward you. Keep it quiet. Keep it small. When you see Felix going out and doing good for others, he's not some seven-year-old standing up on a podium and dressing the world. He's an elementary schooler helping a teacher who's dropped their papers or talking to the new kid on the first day. Specifically for kids, but for adults too, people often feel small. I mean, I'm 5'3", so I feel small all the time. But that's not really what I mean. Yes, we're all called to be the hands and feet of God, but how do we do that in our everyday lives? Sometimes all it takes is a smile, a wave, a hug. Your friendly face might be the reason a little kid looks forward to going to church on Sunday. Every interaction you have with people throughout the day gives you a chance to either add or take away from their bucket. You never know how much your little drop in someone's bucket will affect them moving forward. When I was a freshman at Mount DeSales, there was a girl in my religion class who I wasn't super close friends with, but I knew her. And I knew her enough to realize that she was going through something. She was going through a hard time, and someone had kind of dulled her sparkle. Later, she shared in religion class that her great-grandmother had passed away, and that was really hard on her. But I wasn't close enough to kind of be able to comfort her and be a good friend. So instead, I wrote her a letter, and I put it in her mailbox. All it had said was that God and her classmates were there for her, and if she needed anything just to go to one of us, and then I signed it from her sailor sisters. I didn't put my name, I just said that it was from her classmates. And then I didn't really think of it again. But at the end of the year in religion class, we were sharing about all the growth we had experienced in our first year of high school. She started describing the time she was going through in the fall and the rough encounter she was having when her great-grandmother passed away. And then she told the whole class about a letter she had received. She said that it had been signed from her sailor sisters, and it had made her feel better, but the biggest impact it had was the fact that she didn't know who it was from. It could have been from any of us, and because she didn't know who it was, she expected it from each and any of us. Suddenly, she began to look at her classmates for all the good they were doing and think, oh, wow, it could have been her. Look, look at all the good that she's done for me. And then look at another classmate and think, but wait, she's always been so kind and always been there for me. Maybe it was her. A switch was made and she began seeing everyone for the potential they had for good. I was just too shy to put my name on it. And I didn't want credit for doing that and putting a little drop in her bucket. But because I hadn't made a show out of it, I proved that everyone has the potential to be a good bucket filler. 
She saw that in all of her classmates, and that is how God sees us. We all have buckets, and we all have the choice to either pour into others or take away from them. God calls us not just to put drops in others' buckets, but to make sure we're filling ourselves with him so that when things get bumpy, we're overflowing with Christ and not coffee. Please pray with me. Father God, I thank you for being in this place. I thank you for filling us with yourself, God, with your love. Father, I pray that as we go out into the world, when things get bumpy, when it feels like we are so far from you, that we can pour into others, God. Pour that mercy, pour that love that we know so well. Give it to others, God, until we are full again. Pray for the courage to be your hands and feet, God. And I pray this in your name. Amen.